if you then go and you deal with an organization that can't give you that type of experience, that's not a good place to be. And it's, it's you know, it's my mind, it's an accident waiting to happen. You can change, but it takes real leadership commitment uh, and it, it takes persistency. Welcome to a brand new episode of Engadi CX. I'm your host, Kimberly, and we're really excited to have all of you join us today. On the show, we talk to CX and technology experts from around the world. We explore, uncover, and share fresh insights on creating experiences that your customers will remember and look forward to. Engadi is the world's leading multilingual, no-code digital CX platform available across 15 channels with 53,000 solutions created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Engadi has also been recognized as the top platform by Inc. Magazine, Tech World, CIO Magazine, and many others. Engadi recently also won the Cody 2021 award for being the best AI-driven technology solution. We run the Engadi blog, the video channel, the Engadi CX podcast, receiving upwards of 500,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest, we have Tony Marani with us today on the show. Tony Marani is the founder and the managing partner of Beta Digital, a specialist strategy and digital transformation advisory firm. He specializes in strategy, growth, and market development, a business model innovation and digital transformation, change management, and governance. He has worked across with clients across the globe. Tony is a regular commentator and a presenter on digital disruption and financial services. He has presented a number of international forums. Welcome to the show, Tony. We're so glad to have you join us today. Thank you, Kimberly. Delighted to be here with you. Likewise, before we dive into our amazing and crazy interview with Tony, don't forget to subscribe to Ngati and tap the bell icon so that you get access to exclusive content coming from thought leaders from around the globe. Well, Tony, because of this global crisis that has hit us, I believe that digital transformation is kind of forced on a lot of businesses. What have you to say on this? Yeah, look, I, I think the last year has been very instructive for boards and leaderships right throughout the world. Uh, businesses, you know, they've changed at a, a speed they probably thought was never possible. Uh, overnight, you know, you had companies where, you know, their employees had to work from home, their physical locations had to be closed, they had to come up with new ways to deal with customers online and through other digital channels, uh, and uh, supply chains had to be, uh, you know, reinvented overnight as well. So I, I think there's been a huge amount of change, and, you know, much of this change, you know, if we went back to 2019, businesses probably would have thought was not possible. Yes. Um, but I think, I think what COVID did was, you know, COVID in many sense, you know, in many respects was, was the burning platform because businesses had no choice but to respond to a situation. And therefore they had to, you know, take steps to, you know, keep their employees and customers safe, to keep their businesses alive. Uh, and to make sure that, you know, you know, there was something to come back to post pandemic. So I think, I think it's been very, very instructive on one level. And I think the big challenge now is how do you keep that ability to be agile and to be able to respond quickly and to be able to do things? You know, how do you make sure that you can keep that skill set within the business? Because you might argue, well, why didn't we do these things before? If we mm -hmm. could do them in the middle of a crisis, you know, why, why didn't we do them before? Now, look, uh, I would say that's all very positive, but I, I do have some concerns though, and I might as well give you both sides of the equation. And my, my concern is that um, a lot of firms will start to think, actually, well, that's digital transformation done now. We've done all that. Our people are working from home and we're using online channels. Uh, and I, I get worried when I see headlines such as, you know, years of digital transformation in, you know, months or whatever it might be. Uh, and I would say that, you know, arguably what we've had is years of digitization uh, as opposed to digital transformation. And the distinction is important because in digitization, you're using digital tools to do what you've always done, right? Yeah. But you haven't actually changed the business. You haven't transformed anything. You've just, you're just doing it in a different way, but it's still the same things. And look, working from home is a prime example. You know, am I doing different work or am I just doing it from a different location? Yeah. I, and I, I, think, I, think, I think there's where the challenge is. So we want to make sure that, look, you know, the great things that happened in the last year, organizations could change, they could change quickly. People embrace change and change quickly. But have we really transformed? I would say, no, not really. We're doing things in a different way using tools. Some yeah. of them arguably were there already using tools and technologies to allow us to do that. But I think now what we need to do is look at how do we accelerate digital transformation 
which is to you know strategically rethink the business. I mean, a lot of small businesses also have kind of moved along with this shift. Uh, but now that we think of organizations like Netflix, Amazon, Uber, can traditional <laughs> firms realistically compete with these digital disruptors? Yeah, no, I think the simple answer is yes. Uh, and I think when we look at firms like you know, Netflix and Amazon, well, we need to you know, remember they didn't start as digital enterprises. I mean, Netflix started as a, an organization where you rented DVDs through the post. Uh, Amazon was a, an online bookstore. Now, how we think about them today is totally different because you know, these firms have you know, evolved and they create great experiences that shape how we think about them today. But that, that's not where they started. I mean, they are totally unrecognizable from their humble beginnings. But I think, I think the trick though is, you know, what these organizations and you know, any disruptor does is they, they look at the marketplace uh, and they try to figure out, well, what's the customer actually trying to do? Mm -hmm. uh, and then they look to build a great customer experience and they then use technology to enable and accelerate the delivery of that experience. And so it's a different way of thinking about the business because you know, what they don't do is they don't do incremental change. They don't turn around and say, well, if we tweak this or we add this piece on here, they're sort of saying, no, let's really understand. Let's, let's make sure that we know what the customer is trying to do. Let's make sure we have the data, the insights, and then let's make sure that we're delivering an experience. And I think for traditional organizations, that requires a change in mindset. Uh, and it also means we need to start thinking about our business from, from the customer in mm -hmm. as opposed to the organization out. Because, you know, a lot of organizations, you know, they're here a long time and they're used to doing things in a certain way. And, you know, they, I would argue they innovate on the fringes. So they tweak a few things or they launch something, which is really just an extension of what they already did, as opposed to sort of saying, well, hang on a minute. So if you take, you take Uber, they didn't turn around and say, well, you know, taxis, let's just add in a, a, some sort of a cash point into the car. No, no, they said, no, let, let's understand all of the customer pain points and let's redefine the experience for the customer. And they transform the business. Uh, and I think that's the real challenge for existing businesses today. And I think customer experiences uh, actually taking the customer's perspective first and then creating your strategy around it. Because I think most of our organizations kind of have misunderstood the concept of customer experience where, you know, they are going to set up everything that they're going to do for the customer, irrespective of whether it's needed or not. And I think that is a very beautiful point that you've mentioned where you've said that it is very important to know first what your customers really want and then kind of, you know, figure out a way around that. Yeah, and I think if you take Amazon, you know, their motto is around being obsessed about customers. Yeah. And that's about making sure they have the data that they really understand. You, you know, if you want to buy a book, Amazon will know what books you're interested in. It'll tell you what other books you might be interested in because they know you. Yes. And it's a different way of thinking. Correct. Of course, uh, really now let's tap into uh, a very special expertise that you have in and we would like to know your opinion about what about organizations such as banks and insurance companies, can they really transform or will fintech or bidtech uh, replace tran uh, traditional uh, financial services here? So of course they can change if the leadership mm -hmm. is for change. And the great example, there's many examples, but the, the one I like best is uh, DBS Bank in Singapore, which originally was a state development bank uh, and, you know, has transformed so much in the last decade that it's you know, received so many accolades at this stage, including World Best Bank, you know, Most Digital Bank, all those type of things. Uh, and that was down to leadership having a clear understanding of, you know, what they were trying to do with the business. Now, I think, look, the, the main challenge for banking and insurance is, you know, these industries have been around for hundreds of years. So it's not something that we invented, you know, you know, five, six years ago. Uh, and they've developed in a particular way. Uh, and you know, they have developed, you know, a lot of skills and expertise. But, you know, as the markets consolidated over the last, you know, 40, 50 years or so, you know, they, they, the entities got bigger. And as they got bigger, they became more focused on operational excellence and costs. Right? Yes. Uh, and while they're important things, you know, they're not... They're not the right things necessarily if you become detached from your customers and you don't actually understand what your customers are, are trying to do. And so I think there's a disconnect. And, and look, partly driven by the way they're organized. So, you know, those industries are very silo driven. 
So you got all these different functional expertise. So you got a lot of handoffs. Mm. You don't necessarily have clear visibility end to end of what the customer is trying to do. Mm. And, and then I think the other thing is, you know, it, it's 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 the P and L or the profit and loss count in most financial institutions is either based on products. You know, how many products did we sell, or you know, in what channels did we sell them? Right. Yeah. It's not really driven by you know. Well, let's understand you know the customer needs. Uh, based on understanding the customer and let's understand you know how well we have done in serving those customers so i think there's some real challenges there now fintech fintech is fintech's interesting in that there's a lot of fintech and a lot of money going into fintech but what fintech to my mind does it, it takes part of the banking or insurance operation and sort of says okay well this part is particularly difficult so be it payments or loans or whatever it might be and they say we could do that and we could use digital to create a better experience. Right? Now, the challenge for fintech, of course, is you know scale. You know, the, most of them are not big enough to have a meaningful impact on the marketplace. Right? Now, big tech could, because uh, big tech has a brand you know, that everyone knows, be it Apple, Amazon, Google. You know, these are these are household names that you know by and large you know customers trust. Um, the challenge, as I see it, is. These entities do not want to be regulated as financial institutions. Therefore, they enter into partnerships and e even with financial institutions where they will use their, their brand power to you know, be involved in the fringes of financial services, but not necessarily directly. Now, that could change. So if I was you know, advising a bank or an insurance company today, I wouldn't be betting my strategy on the fact that you know, big tech will never enter financial services. Yeah. They will uh, at a point in time. Uh, so I think the real challenge is, you know, if you're sitting there in a bank or insurance company today, you know, you got a brand, you have customers, you have insights, you know, can you really change your business? Yeah. Or are you just hoping that actually, you know, if, if we keep our heads low, that maybe, you know, these guys won't come along. They will come along because part of the issue is they're educating the customers as to what to expect, right? So when you think of Netflix, Amazon, these, it's not just that they give us a great service, they actually educate us as to what to expect from every service provider. Yes. And if, if you then go and you deal with an organization that can't give you that type of experience, that's not a good place to be. And it's, it's you know, to my mind, it's an accident waiting to happen. So I, th I, think, I think, yes, look, there's some real challenges, but I think, look, as DBS and others have proved, you can change but it takes real leadership commitment uh, and it, it takes persistency because you cannot change an organization overnight. You don't sort of say, well, tomorrow we're going to digitally transform. Good that idea. takes years. And the reason it takes years is it's not about the technology. Right? So you know, it was a great article I read there a few months ago and it said, look, of course you could copy all of Netflix's technology, but it won't make you Netflix right? yeah. <laughs> because it's in their DNA and the technology is secondary. You really have to start using the customer data that you're pulling in. I mean, even voice of the customer is really something that uh, most of businesses do collect, but then they don't really implement that in an effective way to create an impact. So you just have a lot of data with you back end, but then there's nothing really happening there. The real issue is that you know organizations are producing you know tons and tons of data yeah. uh, that no one ever uses. Correct. <laughs> Uh, and also, it tends to be historical in nature. Um, so it, it's kind of, well, what happened last year or last quarter, as opposed to what's happening real time with our customers? You know, what are they doing today? What are they trying to do tomorrow? Right? Yeah. So I think, I think we need to rethink how we use data. Uh, and you know, if you take Amazon, I mean, look, what people don't realize is Jeff Be Bezos started life as a data analyst in Wall Street. So yeah. you know, data is central to how they run the business yeah and you know we need to think about you know if we have all this insight on our customers and we're not using it well someone who has that insight will use it and you know if they give them the experience they want that's where the business will go well now talking about digital transformation i'm sure there are a lot of pillars right and technology is not the only pillar there are other factors like leadership and culture so in your experience how much is a uh, weight that is being carried by these pillars and what are the key steps that organizations should take to kind of streamline all of this together? That was a great question. I, I, I think, I think um, the, the issue is, 
you know, it, it's almost as if hear, people hear the word digital and they don't hear the word transformation. Mm -hmm. right? And hear this digital world and they think, oh, this is a technology issue. Correct. And, you know, we used to talk about the silent T. Well, the silent transformation, they missed the whole transformation piece. Uh, and, you know, that, that's, look, technology is important and technology enables a lot of the change we do. But you have to start with the customer and the technology comes afterwards. And so this, to my mind, is all around the transformation. It's around the leadership challenge in terms of, you know, can you get the vision right? Can you get the culture right? Can you make sure that you're organized around the customer and delivering, delivering those great customer experiences? Uh, and when you look at digital transformation, you know, all the stats say 70% failed. I would argue that very few of them failed because of the technology. The technology, you know, technology will do whatever it's supposed to do. But unless it's embraced and used as part of the business model, it's just going to sit there as another investment in technology that's not delivering. So this comes back to, let's be really clear on what our business is about. Let's understand how we're going to change it. Let's understand how technology will allow us to make that change and to deliver the type of things we want for our customers. But it's not about starting with the technology. It's about starting with you know, the vision, the culture, the, yes. the, the future business model. And you get those right, well, actually, you know, you know, the technology will then do what it's supposed to do and everyone will want it to do what it's supposed to do. Yes, it's like, like not the entire piece, but a piece of a big puzzle. Yes, um, absolutely. Because look, you, you might decide you want to do something you know, yeah. based on a, you know, an understanding of the customer. But the way to be able to do it is using the technology. And that's much different than sort of saying, well, let's just, let's just uh, keep doing what we're doing. We'll add in this technology. <laughs> that's a totally different equation as opposed to let's understand how we're going to change and how the technology will enable that change. Correct. Thank you so much for throwing light on the word transformation where actually culture and leadership do come into picture. And really, it's not all about technology. What advice would you give our leadership teams uh, for accelerating this digital transformation? Any, any golden words here? First thing, so be really clear on the purpose of the organization. And look, there's a lot of stuff been written in the last you know, 12 months, 18 months about organizations being clear on their purpose. But you need to understand you know, why does the firm exist today or the business exist today? That has to be your starting point because if you don't know why you exist and who you're trying to serve and what you're trying to do for them, you know, it's actually, it's actually, it's a difficult position. I think the other thing is you need to define what you mean by digital transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I go into organizations and, you know, every single person around the table has a different interpretation of what digital transformation means. But more worryingly is they don't share those interpretations. So now you have all these unspoken differences. So I think it's I think it's one thing. You think it's another thing. But neither of us are saying because neither of us wants to be found out that we're not quite sure what we're talking about. So you need to define digital transformation and you also need to understand your starting point. So, you know, how digitally mature are we today? Like, where's the gap? from where we are today to where we want to get to. So I think if you can get those things right up front, you can then start to focus on, well, how do we change that? How do we transform? How do we get the culture right? How do we get the experience right? What type of skills will we need? What type of technologies will we need to support that? Uh, what is our overall plan? So th there's a big piece of work in there, but it's predicated on you know, being clear up front in terms of why we exist and what we're trying to do. I then think, look, you, know, you need to make sure everyone's bought in because you know, digital transformation is not something you stand up with the quarterly results and say, well, by the way, we're doing digital transformation because that means nothing to anyone. Right? This is about you know, constant engagement, communication, making sure the context is understood, making sure that the mindset is one where actually we're trying to improve this organization you know, for the benefit of the customers, for the benefit of the employees, for the benefit of the organization. Because then people can sort of say, actually, this organization has a future and I have a future within it. So this makes a loads of sense. And then I think the other thing is, look, stay the course. You, you're not going to change an organization in three months or six months. Mm -hmm. This can take years. Right? But you need to know where you're going. Uh, and OK, it might deviate slightly. right? But you need to have that sense of, look, here's where we're going based on you know, a real understanding of our purpose, a real understanding of what our customers are trying to do and a real understanding of how we need to change. And it's like a plane, a plane flying from say Dublin to New York. It doesn't go in a straight line, it gets blown off course. 
but it knows where it's going and it will get there. So I think, look, you know, they're the real challenges that I see it for organizations. Uh, you've also mentioned a very important point is collaboration. I think uh, teams should also collaborate between themselves in terms of departments, like the product should talk to the marketing, the marketing should again talk to sales and kind of it should be, everyone should be on the, on the same page, right? And I think it's really, really very important in terms of knowing what exactly you want to deliver to a customer and not just have different perspectives in mind. But the customer does not care about the internal constructs of organizations. Mm -hmm. So they don't care that you have an origination department, a processing department, an underwriting department, a compliance department, a legal department. None of that matters. Yes. The customer is trying to do something in their life. And, and they just want to have you know, the least amount of hassle and the best experience. The fact that you do all these things in the background, well, that, that's, that's for the organization to coordinate and make sure it's seamless. Right? But the customer doesn't care about those things. So that's just how we organize internally. But it has to be, and I would argue, it, we need to move from these silos to just end to end, what's the customer trying to do? And then understand how all these things come together to seamlessly deliver that for the customer. Uh, is there any other uh, sound bites you'd like to leave our audience with? I think there's a great opportunity. Um, you know, we've learned a lot in the last 12, 18 months. We've learned we can change when we need to change. Uh, I think, you know, the last 12 months has probably been the easy part because, you know, we just use tools and technologies that were there. I think the, the real challenge now is to bring about the real transformation. Um, I would say to business leaders, don't feel you need to have all the answers because no one has all the answers, right? But you do need to engage with your employees and your customers and start to really understand, you know, what people are trying to do and how you could make that better. And I think, look, you need to be candid with each other based on an understanding of purpose and an understanding of what it is you're trying to do. So you, you can't have a situation where the leadership is at odds, you know, they need to be aligned. And that means they need to put all their thoughts on the table and make sure that, you know, we're, when we talk about digital transformation, we all know what we're talking about. We have the same definition, the same understanding of the, what the journey will be. It doesn't matter who in the organization talks to me or talks to you, they're getting the same answer. Right? Because organizations can see very quickly through, you know, uh, initiatives. Right? And too often digital transformation is an initiative that is being deployed and you know this too shall pass right whereas they need to see that look the organization the leadership team absolutely owns this is committed to it is changing how they're running the business how they're you know looking at the, the performance of the business how they're rewarding employees how they're doing everything right? so there's the big challenge you know if you're going to be serious about it be serious about it and make sure that you know you're creating a future that is right for the organization and, and right for your people yes. because you know what we know today actually will be redundant and you know in a year's time because new things will happen and customers their 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 expectations continue to evolve and if we think to the future you know all of these digital natives you know they are going to be the main employees and the main customers of the future uh, and you know what they want right. might be very different than what we do today so thank you so much for giving us your time and your insights was really valuable thank you Kimberly thank you for inviting me here today likewise we'll be back again with a new episode and a brand new expert soon so stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one